Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to have such an opportunity to share with you. Today, my topic is the innovation of TV news programs in the context of media convergence. Today's lecture consists of two parts. The first part is about the mass media under the postmodern context, including the understanding of media, the relationship between news and publicity, the concept of news, and the principles of news authenticity. In the second part of the course, I would like to talk about how we make TV programs in an innovative way. I would like to share with you in three aspects. The first one. Is what good programs look like. The second part is how to make excellent programs. In the third part, I would like to talk about the problems existing in our current TV programs. Firstly, I want to begin with the general background. That is to say, the mass media and the postmodern context, the postmodernism, originated in the West. Had significantly influenced the world with the wave of globalization, and China is also its beneficiary. Postmodernism is generally regarded as a reversal after the development of modern society or industrial society to the peak. The postmodernism is not a historical stage; it's not just a historical period in the sense of the times. It actually refers to the way of thinking differently from the past. It is a change of thinking mode. So, what are the characteristic of this mode of thinking? We want to summarize it with several keywords from different aspects. The first is its negativity, which emphasizes negation and criticality. The second. It is decentralization and its destructiveness, such as its uniformity, uncertainty, discontinuity, collage, replication, deconstruction, and fragmentation, which are some of its basic features. When we see some concepts like these, we can understand that postmodernism is an affirmation of pre-modernist philosophy. The emphasis on affirmation is also constructive. These features will form sharp contrast. Thus, postmodernism philosophy is a subversion and reaction to modernism philosophy. We are now in such a postmodern context. We are surrounded by such a subversion of the tradition, such a change and differences from the past. In terms of rationality, the emergence of postmodernism is actually a reminder to us. Take the postmodernism as an example. It emphasizes environmental protection and green development. For example, these people will strongly oppose the excessive plunder of natural resources and emphasizes on the humanistic spirit. Therefore. The critical spirit of postmodernism has a certain binding force on the development of modernization, but there are many contradictions itself, and there are many places that can't be self-consistent. In turn, we can see that our mass media is also influenced by postmodernism. I have summed up several aspects. First, the deconstruction of the traditional elite news. Serious news. From the 1990s till now, you may have noticed that the daily news today is mainly about people's livelihood. Such news is very popular. In the past, elite news and serious news seem to demonstrate it, and the change of the content news is directly related to the postmodern context, which is sweeping the world. These come from the advocate of deconstruction and emphasis on common people as well. The second feature is the popularity of copying and collage, as well as authenticity and originality. We can also see that in our present society, content copying and collage are very common. As the internet provides us with a lot of convenience, 
it becomes very easy for us to see other people's works and then copy their articles. The progress of technology has provided us with some convenience. But we think that copying and clash is too easy, then original content becoming very scarce, and also making it harder to be creative and innovative. Another is that with the development of technology, the truth is getting further and further away from us. In the past, we always believed that with the development of technology, such as live broadcast technology, it would be easier to obtain the truth. But in fact, it was not so. It became more difficult to seek the truth. The third point is the difference and the diversity, which are the base of media discourse. You may also notice that the voice of the media is very diverse now. This is because the internet itself is such a big stage with different opinions, different voices and diversified values. Therefore, it's difficult for the media to form a unified voice as internet is the largest platform of postmodernism, one of postmodern. The last one is no depths and anti-orthodox collusion. This problem should be viewed from two aspects. With the pace of people's life getting faster and faster, the long video and in-depth report, which was popular in the past, has a long production period, high requirements for all aspects, and more investment in human and financial resources. But now, the most popular is short video. So when the length of video is shorter, it's difficult to have deep meaning at the same time. Another is that under the wave of entertainment, these short videos are more entertaining and fragmented. Then another is the media, which is developing in the direction of media industry. So thus, the media will become closer to the public, and a good thing is that it can let more people participate in the program and accept it. But it also has a sad effect, that is if the style of the media is not controlled, then the style of the media may become lower than in the past. Next, I'll talk about the main part today, and the first one is to understand the media. The thing mentioned before was just a prologue, and now I'm going to talk about how can we understand the media in today's context. First of all, I'd like to introduce Marshall McLuhan, a Canadian communication scholar, and I will also introduce his understanding of media. Marshall McLuhan was a very famous communication scholar. His understanding media is a masterpiece of communication left to us. Then the world media also firstly came out by Mr. McLuhan. But what he said about media is not the same as us. In fact, the media he mentioned did not only include what we call the narrow sense of media, such as radio, television, newspapers, magazines, and movies. So the media, he said, actually contains all artificial products and all technologies. Now let's take a look at how did he understand media. He divided the media into 26 kinds, and it seemed to have some strange metaphors. Why would this happen? As he used to study literature, he liked to use some literature language. Take the way he described clothing as an example. Mr. McLuhan thought that clothing was a very important media. Why? That was to say, everyone's clothes could all be very expensive, brand name clothes, or they may be very cheap. So, if it was a very expensive suit, it may reveal some personal information about you, which was not necessarily what you want others to know. If you wore a cheap suit, it may expose some personal financial embarrassment and even the class you belong to. The style of clothing may reveal your occupation. Therefore, Mr. McLuhan said that the clothes worn by everyone can reflect the economic status, education level, occupation, aesthetic level, etc. From whether the price is expensive or cheap, 
or the style is formal or casual, and whether the color matching is vigor or elegant. So, he thought that clothing was actually a very important media for a person. For example, Mr. McLuhan thought that newspapers depended on the politics of disclosing information. His words were very popular and easy to understand. For example, we all know that the media includes newspapers. In fact, newspapers here not only refer to itself but also all media. He thought that all media have a very direct relationship with politics. On the surface, it spreads news to everyone, but in fact, there are ideology and the politics behind it. That's what he meant. And we also agree with him. So you must understand politics if you want to run newspapers and media. You must be a politician. You're not only a person who knows how to express words. In this way, you can be a journalist. For another example, Mr. McLuhan thought that it was also called the trouble drum, with the radio station's explanation. As you can see, the trouble drum. Is actually a very beautiful metaphor. As we all know, in primitive society, every tribe may have some drumbeat things that they have agreed on. For example, which rhythm of drum is to let everyone gather at the entrance of the village and go hunting? So Mr. McLuhan gave his favorite radio a definition called tribal drum, which was very beautiful, vivid, and accurate. Mr. McLuhan's understanding of the media is different from ours. I think it also opens a very good window to us. If you are interested, you can read his original text to understand the media. There are twenty-six kinds of media used by Mr. McLuhan, and the definition can be said to be all-inclusive. Moreover, the narrative methods of Mr. McLuhan are metaphors. Especially some indirect metaphors. That is because he is engaged in literary research. He wouldn't tell you in direct ways, but you need to think it yourself. Moreover, he only introduced some mosaics images instead of quantitative description. Mr. McLuhan has made some great contributions to media theory. For example. He divided the media into hot and cold media, which was also called good media or bad media. What is the boundary between cold and hot? It is based on whether it can stimulate the audience's imagination. Mr. McLuhan thought that when you were a reader, you may need more imagination, because you need to transform these words into pictures in your brain. So as a reader. You should be hardworking. You need to mobilize your imagination. But if you watch TV, you may not need to use too much brain, because the picture has been punished in front of you very intuitively. In this case, there may be many potatoes on the sofa that we often talk about. Communication scholars directly call the back from TV audience "couch potatoes." Or potatoes on our chairs. Well, this does not only mean that a person is bloated and unsightly like a potato, but also one who is crazy and lazy to use his brain. Therefore, we say that readers often need to use their brains to associate and analyze the pictures when reading, but as an audience, it may be much easier. Mr. McLuhan. Also put forward a very famous view that media is information. Mr. McLuhan believed that a media is an extension of human beings. This is a great contribution. We say that media is actually the extension of human organs. For example, bows and arrows are the extension of arms. Wheels. Are the extension of legs and feet. Clothes are the extension of skin. Spoken language is the extension of thought. 
Words are the extension of spoken language. Pinyin characters are the extension of vision. Printing is the extension of words. The internet is the extension of brain, etc. In addition, Mr. McLuhan also had a great contribution. That was the concept of global village, which we often mention now. It's also McLuhan's another great contribution to such a concept. The global village actually refers to the development of science and technology, and geographical distance has not constituted an obstacle to our communication now. The Earth has become a small village, so from the above, I briefly introduced Mr. McLuhan theory, which is different. From our narrow understanding in the past, so I think it's necessary for us to learn and understand it, as Mr. McLuhan provided us with a unique perspective. Next, I'd like to talk about the rise of user journalism, because we all know that the transformation of media technology has brought about two very important changes. The first one is that. Audience becomes a user, and each of us is not only the receiver of information but also the producer of information. The second is to take the communicator as the center and turn to make the user as the center. In the past, we used to do media with messenger senders as the center. Now we have gradually become user centered. We use the call of audience and readers, the audience. In fact, the word audience contains many passive meanings. It is a passive reception of information. Now we usually call them users, which is not only the changes word meaning, but also a transformation of many concepts behind. So the two changes we have just talked about have profoundly changed the way people communicate with each other. That is to say. The social structure is also undergoing some changes at the same time. Now, our media are gradually highlighting its social performance. Social media is actually a normal form of human communication. Since the emergence of human beings, social media has always been the mainstream. In fact, our mass media organization communication. It's just a temporary phenomenon interposed in the middle. So we say that communication from ancient times to the present is based on social media, based communication. Then, with the rise of internet, new media has created a new communication landscape. That all things are media, and all people are media. The so-called "all people are media" means that everyone is a disseminator. Then all things are media. The information we get is not only from human society, but also from natural environment, as well as the information interaction among people. It will also be extended to the information interaction between people and things, and between people and environment. So media has been greatly expanded compared to the past. With the promotion of technology, media relations have also brought some revolutionary changes. One is the personalization of mobile terminals. As long as one has a smartphone, it will become very convenient to gather and distribute information. The boundary between the disseminator and the receiver has been broken. In the past, we are the disseminator. And a receiver can only be the passive audience, but now the boundary has been broken, and the user has become the main part of communication activity for the first time. Another is intelligence, which has led to the change of the whole process of news dissemination. I have summarized the following aspects: one is from news collection. That our media paid more attention to information collection in the past, and now more attention is paid to data collection. The second is news production. From manual production in the past to machine production now, robot writing is not only efficient but also very popular, especially in some fields such as sports news, disaster news, and financial news. 
robots can write faster than human beings, and have higher click-through rates. So news production has been changed from manual production to machine production. The third is the distribution of news from the past to the present. We are now. Distributing different news according to the needs of everyone, and their personal characteristics. Tailor-made news for you. The fourth is the reception of news. From the traditional channel in the past to mobile priorities, the number of people who actually read newspapers, read books, listen to the radio, and watch TV in that place now. And the people sitting in the living room, watching TV, may be much less than in the past. However, people are not far away from the media. Instead, the content of your broadcast has changed from newspapers, radios, and televisions in the past to mobile phones. So we change the way from the traditional channel in the past. From the living room to the large screen, and then to the small screen. The last one is news feedback, which has gone from being delayed and fuzzy in the past to being instant and accurate now, because it is very easy now for technology to do this. Next, I would like to talk about the relationship between news and publicity. In fact, people's definition of news has not changed much since ancient times. We say that they exchange similar family daily life, and even choose messengers when collecting and delivering news. That is what we call journalists now. The most basic news value has not changed because of time, and there is a very famous historian named Michel Stevens. He wrote that. In different historical periods and different cultures, people have been exchanging similar news. That is to say, from ancient times to the present, people's demand for news and the content of news they need have not too many changes. So, what is the biggest change in the last few thousand years? It is the technology of communication. While、well, the content of communication has not changed much. Why do people need news? Because news satisfies the most instinct impulse of human beings. That is to say, we can feel secure by knowing something that happens outside the world, which we can't see with our own eyes. We feel that the world is under our control. Sharing information is always the first thing to do when friends meet. Have you heard of anything? As you can say, it's exciting to share discoveries. So why do we will always need news as long as we exist? That is because we need news to maintain our lives, to connect with others, to distinguish friends and enemies, and journalism is the system for providing news. We often want to figure out what is news. News is a narration of objective facts. We often confuse two terms, that is news and publicity. In fact, what is the fundamental differences between these two words? It's because their end results are different. The destination of news dissemination is that the receiver knows what happened. That is to say, we tell our audience what happened. The end result of publicity behavior. Is that the disseminator publicizes the truth? I want you to understand. I hope you listen to me, and I hope you follow me. In this way, the purpose of publicity is achieved. So we say that the end results of the two are not the same. For so many years, we, the media people, often confused these two concepts. Therefore, it is necessary to distinguish news from publicity, and the news is not public opinion. Advertising can't become news. These are our basic concepts. 
From the perspective of expression, there are still many differences between news and publicity. Just now, I just talk about their fundamental ends. News is that the receiver knows what he or she is doing, while publicity is about spreading the truth. Then there are several more subtle differences. One is that news pays more attention to information, and publicity pays more attention to form. That is to say, news may pay more attention to some contents, and publicity may pay more attention to the way of communication. The second, news pays more attention to being new and different. In another way. Being different from things that happened suddenly and abnormal in the past, however, in the publicity, we say that it pays more attention to reputation. There is an old saying that if a lie is repeated ten thousand times, and it will become truth, so advertisement is actually the most typical kind of publicity. No matter whether you like it or not, it's there every day. Then after a long time, although you don't like it very much, you are very sad to find that you have already remembered that it has been deeply engraved in your mind. This is how advertising is used to publicity. The third is that news attaches more importance to the dissemination of facts, while the publicity pays more attention to the dissemination of views. That is to say. The news pays more attention to the dissemination of facts to the public, and the public pays more attention to telling you a truth and a point of view. And the news pays more attention to timeliness, and the publicity pays more attention to seizing the opportunity. It does not mean to rush to publish the news at the first time; it will find a more appropriate opportunity. The fifth. Is that the news pays more attention to communication, while the publicity pays more attention to controlling. News attaches more importance to equal communication. We are at the same position with the media, and although we are just different in profession, we are equal. Thus, publicity pays more attention to controlling the opposite party. One should control the other party, and let the other party listen to himself. This is called publicity. The sixth is that news pays more attention to balance. Publicity pays more attention to tilt. It has tendentiousness, and news pays more attention to balance. For example, if there are two interest parties in two sides manuscripts. Then both of you must let him make a voice. Although you may not agree with one party's point of view, you should let him speak. If he refuses to give him the opportunity to speak, you should write it. Also necessary to explain the situation in the document. For example, my reporter contacted the person involved, but he refused our interview. This shows that he gave up on his own. Instead of giving him a chance to speak, next, I'd like to talk about the value concept of news, for which I think is the core idea of our journalists. Without this understanding, news is not news. We all know that news is a kind of information. Countless things happen every day in our world, but ninety-nine point nine of these things are worthless and not worth spreading. Only valuable information can become news, so that's why some news today is not attractive, and no one watches it. The most fundamental reason is that it's not worth enough. The evaluation of news value has gradually become a negotiation phenomenon. Why? Well, in the past, whether our news had bad news value or not. Was judged by our news organizations, what news was worth broadcasting, what was not, what was valuable, and what was not. However, with the upgrading of audience status and user status, 
we pay more and more attention to their feelings and needs. Therefore, our news agencies will negotiate with the receivers. That is to say, what kind of news you want to hear will be navigated by some media. Then adjust the content we transform ourselves. What kind of news is valuable? Actually, the value of the news is our standard of news. The less possible to happen, the news is more valuable. Why? Because the fact that deviating from the norm has an attractive charm. Therefore, there is an American scholar named Mancher. He said that news is information out of the normal process of events, and it is the interruption of people's ordinary expectations. This is a very wonderful and vivid description. Second, the more uncertain the facts are, the more valuable the information that reduces uncertainty will be. Because what we fear is not certain facts, but uncertain and unknown facts. Third, the greater influence area is, the more people will be affected, and the more valuable the news will be. For example, information such as some natural disasters, like earthquake, can instantly kill a lot of people, and will break countless families, cause great losses to people's property, and collapse of house. While such news must be very valuable, because it affects a lot of people and brings us big loss. The fourth is the fact. That the more relevant to the interest of the audience, the more newsworthy it is, especially those things that happen around you, that are directly related to your interests. For example, your neighbor was patronized by a thief last night. Although the thief did not steal anything, and was found in time, but you will also feel that this news is very important. Because the thief went into the neighbor's house yesterday, and you will worry that whether the thief will come to your home tonight, you may strengthen your guard and be vigilant. This is because of geographical proximity, which makes even less important facts become very important to you. In addition to geographical proximity, there is also psychological proximity. If you have common interests, living area, common gender, age, society, class, region, race, if there is any point that is consistent with you, then it's very valuable for you. The sixth is that the more famous people are, the more valuable for the things happen to them. Take Prince Charles, for example, his marriage status and the century wedding of Princess Diana. Were very impressed. Then his marriage had changed, and he had become such a focus of global attention. Why? Because he is a celebrity. If this thing happened to an ordinary person, there might not be so much attention. So it's celebrity worship. The seventh is that the more conflicting facts are, the more valuable they are. Generally speaking, harmony is equal to blend. So, what kind of conflict is at highest level? It's war. So, all the information about war are the most newsworthy. The eighth point is the fact that the more people can express their emotions. Emotions are what we call joys and sorrows. The more emotional the facts are. The more newsworthy they are. The ninth is that the more psychologically substitute facts are, the more valuable they are. Therefore, we often say that although our narratives and our news are various in content and rich in colors, they are still inseparable from several motifs. One is the motif of winners and heroes. And the other is the motif of love and reunion. So, although the news seems different from each other in content, it can't do 
without such motifs. Tense, the news with more contrast has more news value. Therefore, we say that some things can be judged by a single news, whether it's worth spreading or not. But some of them may need to be compared so that their news value can be highlighted. Next, I want to talk about authenticity of news. The authenticity of news is very important. Why? Because every one of us wants to get the true news, and nobody wants to get false rumors. This is a basic demand of human beings, because only real information. Can give us a sense of security, because security comes from knowing. Today, while the internet is very developed, fake news is much more than in the past. So we need to identify what kind of news is true, what kind of information is true, what kind of news is false. We should try our best to eliminate. Thus. I would like to list the four types of news here, except the first one. The final three types are not based on authenticity. In the first category, we say that we advocate that our news should be called confirmatory news. That is to say, our traditional verified news must become a habit of us. Many false news is not verified, and the come out. Which will bring some bad influence to the news media. Then the latter several types. One is the assertive news, which is not checked, and the second is positive news, that is the news catering to the audience's existing concept, makes the audience very happy after listening, but is not true. Then the last kind of news is called aggressive news, the aggregate news. Is not responsible for distinguishing rumors, facts, and conjectures. The work of eliminating the false and retaining the true is left to the users. As we all know, eliminating the false and retaining the true should be what the gatekeeper of media organizations need to do. But now, the role of many media gatekeepers is getting weaker and weaker. Many things are sent out in a flash, as for whether they are true or not, they don't check them. Finally, there are a lot of false news, which has caused a lot of negative effects. Therefore, we must pay attention to verification when we do news. Okay, I'd like to talk about the second part, the innovation of TV programs. The innovation today is getting harder. The partial innovation is much more difficult now. Not to mention about the general innovation, but we can't be innovative only because of its difficulty. So how can we make good programs, innovative programs, and creative programs? First of all, we need to know what a good program looks like. I want to explain it to you from several aspects. First, it's very important to reflect the major theme of the program. The more significant the topics are, the better the news will be. Then the second is the program that can get deep understanding from a small point of view, which is what we often say to reflect the big problem from a small aspect. This is just like a drop of water reflects sunlight. Why? Because not every one of us can counter to big news topic, but we can reflect the major problems from some small things. Then the third is a program full of profound problem consciousness. That is to say, we usually go to find news, but how can we find good news and excellent topic selection? We need to have a sense of problem. If you can't find a problem, you see what you think is very good. There is no problem. You can't be an excellent reporter. Excellent reporter. If other people can't find a problem, you can find problems. So we say we should have a problem awareness. When we look at something, we should look for it and see if there is any problem. 
So the last one is a program that reflects the topic of common concern of the masses. That is to say, you should know what people are concerned about, what problems they need to solve, and what difficulties they have, and you can report their needs. This is certainly a good program. Therefore, we say that excellent program content always revolves around these four aspects. Next, I'll show some news headlines here to explain to you that why these are good news. The first one is one yuan out payment fee and free treatment in Yujiang, Jiangxi province. From the headline, you can see that the people there only need to spend one yuan to see a doctor. It is very cheap. In another word, the medical treatment there is free. Such a medical treatment must be a reflection and solution to the problem that medical drugs are. The second is a series of reports named the sample of housing renovation in the lane houses in Shanghai. This news report is also a reflection of people's livelihood and the governmental solution. Then the third one, such as the TV review, when the phoenix returns to the nest, and the Haixin's reorganization recording. These are actually some contents of enterprise reform and business environment reform. Besides, there are some other programs, like the TV special topic, after village renovation, mainly about the renovation of villages, and some topic about fundamental governments, like focus on the governmental reform, opposite to bureaucracy and corruption. As you can see from the headline, this new is about governmental reform. Some topics like this are closely related to the four aspects we just mentioned. Therefore, such a topic has its own advantages. In addition, it has done it consensuously, and that's why they have won the prize. We can take these excellent words as a learning standard and example. In addition to the content, there are also some requests in the forms of expression. One is that a form should be novel and unconventional, and a form should be diverse. Another is that this entry point needs to be clever. Don't go straight to the theme. If this is too straightforward, we will not be interested in looking at the following things. Also, the language of narration should be clear. It's better to use witty words and connect them smoothly. The other is the structure. It's better to design carefully. For example, there's an award-winning news story about diary, which records the relationship between father-daughter. In fact, it tells some stories about ordinary people. Then the story of ordinary people is hard to attract people. Well, the reason why this manuscript won the prize. It's not because of the topic. It's because that the writer reversed the story of ordinary people by means of flashback. So we can learn from the storytelling method. That is, if the thing itself is not particularly attractive or is more common for ordinary people, we can put more effort into the structure constructing. For example, we should not follow the sequence of time. Instead, we should turn the matter upside down and turn it upside down. In this way, people may be attracted. The third point is distinctive features, strong sense of scene, rich audio, live connection. That is to say, we make TV programs as it has a lot of symbols, such as sound and pictures, so we should use these symbols sufficiently. Otherwise, it will be just the same as the text report. Here, I'd like to take Beijing TV as an example. This is a love story across 2,000 kilometers and 4 hours. There is a 21-year-old donor who donated his heart to a 12-year-old boy. The donated heart was sent across 2,000 kilometers for about 4 hours flight. At last, the 12-year-old boy was saved. We all know that 2,000 kilometers is a very long distance, but in the end, it took only four hours for the donor's heart to reach the chest of the 12-year-old boy who received the donation. So like this report, 
there is live broadcasting in it. The characteristics of radio and television are very distinctive. The elements used in symbols are very sufficient. The sound, picture, connection, and the live broadcast are used. The effect is very good, and the scene is very strong. The fourth is the high level of production, including pure voice, clear image, and can tell stories. The news about Zhang Kaiyuan, who became the first person to resign his senior professorship in China. It's very clear to the news receiver. There is another example in Baiyin Guoleng, Mongolian Autonomous Prefecture, where animal husbandry technicians are tested for professional titles in the field, not in the classroom as we used to think, but on the spot. You can diagnose the cow and see if it's sick. If you make a very correct diagnosis, you get the immediate veterinary title. If you don't show the cow what's wrong. You may not have passed the exam, so the news is also very vivid, with a lot of pictures and sounds, and very concise, that people understand at a glance, and very interesting. Finally, I would like to talk about the problems in the program. As we all know, no one is perfect, so is the program. Even the accent programs can still be some defects. Then. These flaws deserves our attention in the future to do not repeat these mistakes. The first is the lack of basic skills. This leads to the confusion of narrative context and the rupture of program structure. We often make such mistakes when we tell stories and write articles, and our writing in discourse is not coherent. For example, there is an article about an old man. After he retires, he pays for the village to build a road to facilitate everyone to go out of the village. This is a very good beginning. However, the second half of the story changes from crafts and to how he educates his grandson. Then the theme does not run through the structure from the beginning to the end, which makes structure broken. Although it's the same person, we say that the theme has changed. In this case, we should try our best to avoid this. Another is that the TV programs we do are linear transmission, because we all know that TV is a kind of radio media. It's linear transmission, and it tells stories according to the progress of time. It's different from newspapers and paper media. Paper media is a plane. It's an occupation of space. So linear media like TV and the radio should have this theme as a red line, which should be consistent. Don't let the topic be scattered. Don't mention the topic in the first half of the paragraph, and the theme in the second half has completely changed. Well, in this case, it gives people a feeling that the overall sense is not strong. So try to avoid this problem. The second is that some programs will forget some important issues when interviewing. This is because their ideas are immature. So that is to say, interviews and the questions miss important questions, and lack some sense of hierarchy. For example, the first question and the tenth question you asked at the beginning are on the same level. It should not be a bound of interviewing question. It should have a sense of hierarchy. It should be progressive from the shallow to the deep. In this way, the feeling will be better. Then your manuscript will make people feel that the hierarchy is clear and the narration is clear, and the final one is deep. The third is that, although some manuscripts have good topics, they are not good at storytelling, narrative techniques, and the lack of innovation. For example, there is a story about the sake of the lives of seventy-seven brothers and sisters. It was about rescuing seventy-seven injured people in a hospital for four days and four nights. Originally, this event was very moving, and the event itself was breathtaking. But because of the ability to tell stories, so although it was very good topic selection. It was not very wonderful. 
these things happen a lot, so we should strive to improve our narrative ability. That is to tell a story, tell a good story, so that we will not waste good topics. Fourth, there are some news reports that are not deep enough in theme. Some reports are shallow, and some reports a lack of integrity and strength. Therefore, it shows that our reporter needs to be an expert in the field you report. If you don't have a thorough understanding of this field, but only very superficial, then your report may easily lack depth, and its communication effects may not be very good. Fifth, the category is not clearly defined and standardized. We do many types of programs, and we know that the goal of each program is actually different. For example, news, which mainly tells people what happened, is actually a kind of in-depth report. Special reports often requires us to have deep content, so you're right to comment with some opinions, attitudes, and analysis of certain piece of news published on this matter. So it's mainly a display of views. For example, for special reports, they are very different from news reviews. Special reports are in-depth reports, so they are not a subject matter. They need to be hierarchical. Depths is just a general term. We say that in-depth reporting can be divided into at least three levels. For example, the first level is reflective in-depth reporting. That is to say, it should be more detailed and in-depth than the content in the news, with more direct quotations, more details, stories, numbers, and other materials. Therefore, it should be more detailed and deeper than the news. This is the first level of the special report. Then, the second level is called interpretative in-depth reporting. That is to say. On the basis of reflective in-depth reporting, you should explain the cause and effect of the news, the context, and make an explanation. Therefore, in the 1930s, the American press put forward a slogan called "Explain it, don't let readers guess." So we say that interpretative news reporting is to dig into the causes and consequences. And the context, in-depth reporting. What is the most difficult thing to achieve at the highest level of special reports? That is analytical in-depth report. That is to say, it should not only have stories, but also reports and facts, but also analyses and comments. You should also have opinions to contribute, not only telling stories. This is the highest level of in-depth reporting, and it is also the most difficult to achieve. It requires our reporters to have a relatively high level of ideology and theory to do it. Therefore, we talk about the three levels of special reports, and the most superficial level is the reflective in-depth report. The second is interpretative in-depth report. And the highest level is analytical in-depth reporting. We have to work at the highest level. The sixth is that we don't pay much attention to headlines. People who do radio and television often do not pay attention to the production of headlines as much as newspapers people do. Therefore, there are some phenomena in our TV news, such as the text is not correct. The text is not close to the topic, or the title is too large and too long. So, although we are doing TV, we should also learn from the editor of the newspaper, and strive to make the headlines concise, appropriate, accurate, and can summarize the content. After reading the title, we would like to know what this thing is and to be attractive. You say, like there are some programs reporting things. It's very simple in itself, but our title is particularly mysterious. Would have been very simple and clear a thing to say the truth of the investigation of the event. It actually does not have a wave and depth. 
It seems to be a mystery, a fuss, so it's not appropriate. There are also programs, such as a program called Qinghai Jieshen, going to the world. It talks about a kind of cleaning machine, a sweeping machine. This seems to be a piece of news, but in fact, we say that it has the suspicion of selling products for soft advertising, which we need to avoid. Another title like this, "Don't Ask Heroes Where They Were From," seems to be the title of a review. That is to say, heroes do not need to ask about their origins, as long as what they do is a heroic feat. It's worthy of our admiration. This title is a typical common title, but after reading it, we found that it's actually a special topic, which is not accurate to the headline. There are also some news headlines talking about the title of a message. The writer must put several elements of the news in it, so that people can understand a general idea without looking at the content after reading the title. However, we still don't know exactly what the title is after reading the title, and unforgettable special days. This is an explanation, and there is no much information in it. Therefore, it may not be appropriate for us to say that is the title of the message. The seventh problem is that there are some programs that lack of news pretext. That is to say, it makes people feel that this event. Has been going on for many years. It's relatively old and lacks freshness. In fact, it's a very good thing. However, we are not very good at telling stories. For example, in this article, it was she who brought the diary of rape back to light. Such things must have happened many years ago in the last century. Then we should look for a new change. The latest fact. Should be put at the beginning. In this way, people will consider this report as the latest news instead of history. Therefore, we say that we should know how to look for the news and cover up the old facts. Another problem is that the program sometimes lacks the sense of balance. As I said earlier, that is, news must pay attention to two sides rather than pulling off the shelf and just speaking one side. For example, like this article, do dash recorders compete for a card? Is it a safety need or a benefit need? The reporter only interviewed the driver because he thinks the driver is vulnerable. But the other side should be the voice of traffic police, traffic management department, and the whole story is the voice of the driver alone. So if not balanced enough. So we say that balance is also connected with authenticity. So we say that balance can be true. Can we not be one-sided? Avoid one-sided, and can be comprehensive. The nice is that there are some special reports, which are relatively weak in news and lack of analysis and thinking. For example, there are some good articles, but we say that it lacks a dynamic feeling. For example, the tenement worker in late night is about a kind of work which is very rare and unknown to all. Another article is called "A Ministry of Dear Trap Who Can't Predict the Future." It's about a very small ethnic, as the number of this ethnic is getting smaller and smaller, and young people are willing to rush to big cities. This is a story. So. For a program like this, its whole feeling belongs to this kind of static narration. Why is it that that the feeling is only a static narration because it lacks the connection with the reality and the problem consciousness? For example, you are like a turnout worker in late night. His type of work is unknown, but it is a very important type of work. What are the problems? Where it will go in the future, such as the Ministry of the Air Trap, who can't predict the future, which talks about the future direction the tribe should develop. Therefore, it's only some description, lacking、like、the deep problem consciousness and the tension 
that some new feature programs should have. So, we say that if you don't have the ability to analyze these problems, there is another way that we can draw on some experts and scholars who are experts in this field. Their opinions can reflect the depths of thinking. We can get some help from experts. Today, it's very convenient to call experts now, and under their help, we can make our manuscripts more thoughtful and profound. The tenth problem is the lack of objective spirit. We think that journalists should achieve objective balance, and the reason should be invisible, and speak with facts. Therefore, we often talk about news writing. News writing is actually an art of hiding the tongue. You should hide your tongue, and you should not jump out to make comments. This will make the audience more disguised. In addition. We should try our best to avoid some emotional words in news writing. Words like "unexpectedly" and "unexpectedly" should not appear in our manuscripts. There is also a lack of humanistic connotation. For example, there is a manuscript about how to make ma tou qin, a kind of traditional instrument in China. In fact, our audience, actually our readers. May want to know that it is the people who make the Matou Qin, the story behind him, his fate, their joys and sorrows. Therefore, we should tell the story of the people behind us through the horse ahead lute, rather than just about how to make it, how to find the right wood, how to polish it, and then we don't want to learn how to make a musical instrument. We just want to know the story behind it. So when we tell a lot of stories, we don't pay attention to these aspects. That is, we don't do a good job in selecting good topics. The other is that the program planning is not complete and deep enough. For example, there is a factory called Boutou Match Factory, which was once very popular. People all over the country used their matches, because lighters did not appear at that time. Later, more and more products were used to replace matches. The match factory went from prosperity to decline. So this program is over. We talked about how brilliant he was in those years, but we said that the program was not complete enough. What should we do to improve this program? It should be why the factory has gone from prosperity to decline, and how to transform in the future. This is the focus of this program, so we say that, in fact, the producer only did one third of the program, and only reads the questions. Why do these problems appear in the future? What should we do? Two thirds of the latter two parts are not done, so we say it's incomplete. What's more, there are some programs that have problems with the value guidance. For example. There is a program about gambling stone. It's about a man in Yunnan who blocks a stone because he doesn't know whether there is a jade dab in it after a step down. Then everyone gambles on the stone. The highest bidder gets the stone. After the stone is shown, it's found to be a valuable jade tui. She is very good looking, and then this man became rich overnight. We say that. There are some problems in the orientation of such programs, because in addition to those who become rich overnight, there are also many people who have failed in gambling. They may be ruined overnight, and the program has not even mentioned a word about the huge debt they owe. Therefore, it can be said that there is a problem with this orientation, and then we should encourage everyone. To gamble on stones and not tell us its harmfulness. There is also a program in life, which is also the same problem. It was also said that this person threw the stock market, from the initial investment of a small amount of money, finally became a millionaire. We know that the stock market is risky, but in this program, 
he did not talk about those losers, but getting rich overnight. So we should try not to do such a program, because it has guiding problems, and there are also some problems, like the distribution of audio images is uneven and discordant. The simultaneous sound or the arrangement of oral broadcasting is too concentrated, and the audience is easy to feel tired and monotonous. These are not conductive. To the dissemination of information, so we should try to balance the distribution of oral drafts and audio image with not all the first broadcast and then the images, or there are images at first and there's no image at the back. This is unbalanced. We should try to avoid it. There are also some problems. Some special reports are lack of depth and the dynamic motions. For example, some may lack some historical and realistic links, such as the connection between China and foreign countries, and the unify of the whole and the part. So you can regard this as the pure history program. But if he may lack some contact with reality, it will lack depth and inspiration. There are also some programs that are richer in topics than in the past. In the past, we may not do such topics, but now we do. But after we do, the theme lacks some refinement. And after watching it, for example, there is a trust restaurant in Fuzhou. After watching it, we are very confused. What do you want to show? You have to show trust, because it's called trust restaurant. And it doesn't seem to be. At first, it said that the restaurant let vagrant people eat free of charge on the basis of love. Later, it said that the meal still had to be paid. It just means that you can give as much as you like. So we see that there are two themes intertwined in it, namely, love and trust. The author. Didn't know the boundary between the two concepts, so he mixed them up to make people feel like they didn't know what theme you were going to show. Thus, before we tell a story, we journalists should first think clearly what I want to explain to my audience through this story and through these people. You should think clearly about a certain fact or a certain truth first. I'm afraid you can't make it clear to others with its faintness. Another is that some programs are too long, and the narrative rhythm is slow and slow, which will also affect the viewing effect. Why? Because our communication scholars think that, as a normal and healthy adult, his high concentration time is no more than twenty minutes. Therefore, I also think that the best length of of a program should be controlled within twenty minutes, which is acceptable to a normal adult. This length is better, not too long. Now some programs often take an hour or two, and our audience are very busy, so it's better to control the time. So we say that, considering the audience receptivity. It's best to take fifteen to twenty minutes, so that the program can achieve better results. Another problem is that we should pay attention to the language easy to understand. As I said before, we are now in a postmodern context, so we should pay special attention to the people's understanding ability, especially some professional words appearing in our manuscripts. So, we must pay attention. To explain them until they understand, for example, take this article: ten consecutive increases in Gansu province found a way out for the steady increase of green production in a vast arid area of China. There is a term called double film, double reach, and furrow sowing. If we are not experts in general, we really don't understand it. Therefore. We must explain the term to the audience. For example, 
the world's first flag made of space material, the five-star red flag is shining moon, was developed by the Fifth Academy of Aerospace Cooperation. The reason why the national flag shines on the moon is mainly because the material of the flag is called polyimide. So what is polyimide? We are not experts in this field. Most of us don't understand it. So if you don't explain, it may affect the audience's understanding of the content. There is another problem. Many news like to be accompanied by some music. Although music has its advantages, which can set off the situation and increase the appeal, but we say that to a certain extent, it may also affect authenticity and the positivity of the works, because most of the news is serious. If the music is not suitable, it may affect the communication effect. We don't support that news should be accompanied with music, especially serious news. For example, some programs themselves are good, but the broadcasting is too sensational and exaggerated, and the broadcasting cavity is too strong, which seems to be fake, and this will affect the expression, the content. Once I had seen an article called "The Most Beautiful Village Doctor." It's a very touching, and the manuscript is well written. However, the anchor man read it more sensationally, and the result is not very good. Some news today is too small and too trivial, so the news value may be limited. For example, there is a taxi driver fighting a gangster. The matter itself is very simple. That is, there is a passenger. Who does not give money and also wants to kill the taxi driver? But the driver was a veteran before, and caught the gangster easily. He subdued the gangster, and the gangster himself was a thin and dry man with little energy, and then sent the gangster to the public security organ. You say such a thing is too small and trivial. Generally speaking, we don't broadcast this as a very important news. There are some programs which groundworks are so long that mislodge the process of the main part, because, as we know that, if the audience can't see the substantive content within two minutes, he may change channels, and this will lead to audience lose. So we said that. We should enter into the substantive content as soon as possible, and we should not lay too much groundwork ahead. Another is to try to reduce typos in our TV news. In addition, we must have a clear voice of the sound; otherwise, the effect will not be good. That's all about my sharing. Thank you very much.